talk today about uh, cloud forensics. Uh, my name is uh, Alexander Adamov, and uh, so I do security writing at uh, Mirantis. And before we start discussion, I would uh, like to ask uh, our guest uh, to introduce uh, yourself, please, like shortly, in a few words, who, who are you and what, what you do? Yes, hello, my name is Kim Indart. I'm Chief Security Officer at Seed Network, obviously not for shares. <laughs> so, but <laughs> uh, that's me. Hello, my name is Anders Carlsson, and I'm a university teacher at BTH in Sweden. I also am an instructor as in uh, forensics at uh, European level, where I teach uh, police instructors for BKA in Europol. Uh, okay, so before b b before we start uh, the discussion, uh, I would like uh, we will state the problem. But first, uh, I'm uh, interested. Uh, how many of you are familiar with forensic and know what forensic is? Okay, cool. Uh, so before the meeting, we had a couple of uh, discussions with the forensic experts, with police, and just to figure out uh, what is the state, state of the problem. So uh, in which way they, they, they do forensic, like in real life. And uh, uh, have, have they done any forensics in clouds, in virtualized environments? And uh, when we mentioned, like, we are going to talk about cloud forensics, uh, they just uh, open uh, eyes widely and uh, ask, uh, is it possible to do forensic uh, in, in clouds? So uh, I, I, I would like uh, to ask uh, Anders uh, Carlson, who is a, a trainer and he's the author of uh, courses, forensic courses for, for the police. Can, can, can you please uh, explain in a few words what, what, what forensic is and what, 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 we, what, what challenges we have in, yeah, in cloud forensics? Uh, to start with uh, someone maybe just shortly, forensic. Uh, the, we have a part different side of forensic, and uh, initially it's like to put on the Sherlock Holmes hat and start finding small digital fingerprints inside the computer. Or and there we have done lots of works the last years. We all we run live forensics, memory forensics, uh, and the thing is that the difference comes when you take this evidence or these digital fingerprints to court when you have solicitors or lawyers to try to break them apart. You have made a hypothesis about something has happened and it could be fraud for bank fraud or whatever or a hacker or a simple word puking at Facebook and you want to have some suit for a lawsuit. Uh, do your paperwork stand up in court? Or is it just paperwork? Uh, yeah, that's what we're struggling with the forensic. And the huge thing about uh, cloud is that, okay, we know how it works with single computer, image forensics, network forensics, uh, everything. But when we come to virtual machines and we come to cloud, we have, yeah, it is a very complex world to put together a chain of evidence. I think that's, it's extremely complex. Uh, yeah, uh, just, just to add uh, a few words to, to Anders' speech, um, I've been doing uh, incident investigation, which is uh, quite similar to uh, digital forensics. So in both cases, we need to collect uh, signs of uh, attack. Uh, in uh, digital uh, forensics, we need to, to collect uh, digital evidence. So uh, we need to also to keep in mind um, that the data we collect from, from the clouds, they, they, they should keep integrity. So we do not temper the data so we can bring it to the court uh, as it is. Uh, so uh, I've been doing uh, investigation uh, several times and uh, uh, usually uh, I see there is a lack of uh, investigation uh, strategy in, orga in organizations. So when, when you, for example, uh, ask to, to, to bring uh, information about the attack, data about the attack. So, uh, for example, in uh, uh, ransomware attack, uh, people like uh, administrator usually send you uh, encrypted files. Yeah, that's actually fine to have like some private photos, uh, I don't know, encrypted with AES-256, but this, this, this information is totally uh, useless. So uh, this is uh, like um, 
big job to collect uh, evidence like uh, logs uh, to, to find out the traces. So how this uh, cloud environment or uh, uh, corporate infrastructure was attacked. So what is the breach? Uh, what information was stolen? So to, to do that, uh, we need to uh, like administrate IT. IT staff need to, to do uh, a lot of uh, work. Um, and it would be nice to, to have it automated. Um, so um, before, before I continue, uh, I also uh, started searching if we have any project about forensics in OpenStack. And I found that we, we, have, we had uh, a project for, a uh, forensic project for uh, OpenStack Essex, I believe, in 2012. And uh, this project was called uh, Frost. So here you can, you can see uh, the diagram uh, of the project. This, 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 this is not, uh, this wasn't production project. This was uh, like scientific research. And uh, this is a project uh, shows uh, proof of concept of for forensic tool for OpenStack. As you can see, uh, the researchers, uh, the authors of this project, they implemented uh, extra functionality to uh, compute service and also to dashboard. So this is actually what we want to have. We want to have a button on your dashboard. And if incident happens, we need to click the button and to collect uh, the digital evidence from our cloud. And, uh, uh, but uh, I checked, I checked the, the repository, the Git repository, and actually it hasn't been updated since 2013. So this, this uh, project was like a dead burn. Uh, in, uh, uh, so when, when we talk, when we talk uh, with the police and uh, uh, with the forensic experts, we figured out that they still do uh, uh, forensic in conventional ways. So they, they analyze IT infrastructure, even virtual infrastructure in, uh, in a regular way. So they, they take the dump of the memory, they take the uh, uh, data from storage, uh, they try, it. If, if, if the traffic is recorded, so it, it, it's, it's, it's okay, but in most cases, we can get the uh, uh, cached traffic uh, from the company. And uh, so they do not use like any, any specific uh, tools for virtualization. So they, for example, uh, the most popular tool is uh, uh, volatility framework. It's a toolkit to, to get uh, uh, the dumps of uh, RAM memory, volatile memory memory and it is good that because uh, it it is it, it supports uh, windows linux mac os and i even did uh, forensics for android devices so you can you can install uh, volatility tool on android device and uh, take 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 the memory dump so um, that's actually the problem so we don't have uh, a, like any functionality any project in in, in openstack and uh, so that's why i invited um, experts uh, team uh, from uh, from city network uh, just to share experience how they do uh, audit how how they get logs uh, in clouds so just to share uh, share this information with you uh, about best practices how to do forensics please kim yeah uh, thank you uh, the thing is in the cloud uh, we have this problem like when the police comes and say we want the physical storage and we say, but it's a customer VM, so you need that storage. They don't really understand it. And that's the problem when the police say, we want your entire Ceph storage. And I say, no, <laughs> you won't get it. We want it. OK, here are 10 racks. Go ahead. <laughs> and they don't really get this um, in the cloud. So the thing is with the logging in the cloud. You can, if you run OpenStack, be forensically sound by the logs themselves in OpenStack. The problem is today that the logs need to be in debug level. So they're insanely huge. They're insane amount of logs. And most of the logs in debug level will be pure and simple nonsense. But that's what's required by the law today to be forensically sound. Uh, this is sort of a problem I would hope that OpenStack would solve in time with maturity to have a specific security log event logging that you pipe to a specific log setting so you don't need to have debug level because you get 
crazy amounts. So it takes a lot of our <laughs> backup storage, actually. That's pure logging. Then you have this other thing when you have a specific case against a specific tenant. I can't send them all the logs. But if I don't, then they're not forensically valid because then they're filtered. And that's not, uh, it should be <coughs> unchanged, unfiltered, uh, these things for a log for, to have a forensic sound. And uh, then I need to give the authorities the opportunity to take and review all my logs that they are actually forensically sound and then filter because I will breach confidentiality against all my other customers if I give them debug logging data except for the one tenant that that's actually they have a case against. This is also something that I think r needs to be addressed in trainings, in IDs, a process. How can I be legal? How can I reach a neutral authority that can actually do log filtering in a forensically sound way? The same as to gather evidence in any other way without compromising the integrity and security of the other tenants. That's <clears throat> as, as I understand, we have uh, two, two types of uh, problems in forensics. We have uh, uh, legal issues. So, for example, we, we cannot uh, share, share uh, the logs, which includes not only the compromised tenant uh, information, but, but other tenants' information. Which, in which we, as you said, we will violate confidentiality. And the second thing is about uh, technical issues, like, uh, as I said, like uh, to have some magic button, how to, how to collect the, the evidence uh, in, in a matter of minutes, better in a matter of minutes. Because from my experience, uh, when we did investigation, when, when we provide some SLA for, for, for the, for the corp uh, corporate customers, we had uh, four hours to, to analyze the threat and to come up with a report uh, showing, uh, explaining the payload of the uh, attack, of the malware, and uh, uh, how it is, uh, how it's been penetrated uh, the network, and uh, uh, how, um, what, what, what information was stolen, leaked, and uh, uh, how, to, how to remediate uh, servers and in infrastructure. And uh, so, this is just imagine like uh, four four hours, and it, it's better to, to to have like automation tools to reduce this time when incident happens, and uh, uh, till till the uh, we we do some incident mitigation, and that that that's the challenge. And for example, in some cases, like in cases of targeted attacks, uh, like uh, we discussed the, uh, the case with uh, Ruak. Uh, Ruak is uh, uh, like uh, what what what. Yeah, it's a switch, switch uh, military no. supplier, and they had a breach where they lost the information for over two years. And when they come up with it, uh, two years, I mean, that is why we have zero days bug. They are living long time today because the zero days are very well hidden. We have the, we can say heartbeat or whatever the bug you want to know, but they are used. And the people who have them, they use them. In this case, they use some of those to tap information from RUG, a military supplier, during two years. And they, we had surveillance over what happened during six months. And then they pulled the plug and disappeared from the internet. And that was the case. That was a long case how to make incidents looking for what has happened, recreate the story. Yes. Yeah, so so, so we can see like uh, the time between incident happens and it, it was discovered and mitigated can be like about two years. And it's, it's not the worst uh, uh, example because uh, in, uh, if, if we take a look at, um, uh, at the history of target attacks, we can see that uh, some uh, APT's footprint, uh, uh, we, can, we can found uh, traces of these APT's like uh, during the last like uh, five, seven, seven years. So these this, uh, uh, APTs were active during such a big amount of time and they did not discover it. So uh, the, the idea is to make uh, this time uh, shorter 
and uh, we need to pro provide both like disc 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 discovery um, methodology and uh, the second one is uh, how to collect uh, incident information, incident data, uh, cloud uh, digit uh, digital evidence. And uh, to add also to, to Kim's uh, speech, uh, in this first project, in forensic OpenStack uh, project, which was unfortunately, um, it's, it's, uh, it's not supported anymore. Uh, in this project, we uh, had a proof of concept which uh, collects uh, logs from, uh, from the nodes, from compute nodes, and uh, uh, these logs, they were hashed. And uh, Frost built the hash tree. So they, uh, but the, the thing with this uh, um, hash tree, with, with the logs exfiltrated from the nodes, that were uh, uh, filtered according to, uh, for a specific tenant. And as we as we figure it out, it's not it's not uh, it 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 can it cannot be used like a digital evidence, because we temper it logs. We don't get the uh, raw logs, but we get only some of the information from the log, and it's not digital evidence. So uh, so both both technical and uh, legal issues we see in this in this aspect. Yes, and then we have these issues with privacy, that. Uh, you can demand an expectation of being forgotten. If you're no longer a customer with us, we will erase the tenant. And if that c comes back two years later, then we have really little chance of helping in that case, because if they erase the tenant, uh, all laws state that I have to properly erase the information as well. Yeah, and uh, just uh, one, one, one more uh, thing to add to, uh, to uh, finding digital evidence, like um, we, we had a case like last year uh, with a crypto locker attack to, to telecom company. And uh, uh, so we find out the, uh, the malware which was used to attack, the, the, the data storage was encrypted. Uh, uh, crypto locker infected a desktop computer uh, and using Active, di uh, active Directory uh, user account, uh, which uh, had access, uh, read-write access to the file storage. Uh, CryptoLocker encrypted all the data on, on uh, storage. So we try to, f to help uh, this company to uh, recover files and to, to, to decrypt the files. And the thing that uh, some of the keys that can be used to, to decrypt files, they were sent in a special chicken request, encrypted chicken request to the remote server. And when we started investigating, if we can get uh, like this uh, uh, URL history from the internet provider, we couldn't get it because by default, internet provider just, uh, this option was not enabled. And this just um, uh, destroyed our efforts to, to, to help this company. So it's, it, it, it's, it's essential uh, to have uh, login enabled, to have uh, traffic uh, cache, uh, URL request, so this will help uh, dramatically to investigate the case and to, to collect digital evidence to, to, to actually to find traces. <coughs> and about the case that uh, Anders told about Ruak, uh, the thing was that uh, uh, just, um, uh, the experts from CERT, from Switzerland CERT, uh, CERT, CERT is a, a computer emergency response team, they, they're responsible <coughs> to analyze government attacks. So they, uh, they uh, uh, find out that uh, the RUAC network was infected at least since 2014, <coughs> like two, two, two years ago. <coughs> but the thing that they, they're limited uh, uh, with the lifetime of logs. Yeah, they, they, they had just, uh, if, if for example, this company uh, store logs for, for a bigger amount of time, so they, they, they could uh, find out the exact uh, time when, when the network was compromised. And uh, uh, based on this, they, they, they can uh, know what information was leaked. So since, since what exact time uh, this information was recorded and sent to, 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 to the attacker. So it's uh, also essential to, to keep in mind and uh, like for, for how long are you going to keep uh, your logs? Of course, uh, the longer the better, I think. But uh, in the recommendation, I found out it's like uh, around uh, two days or three days, uh, like recommended uh, uh, log, log rotation uh, time frame? Uh, yeah, this depends a lot uh, about uh, from 
these logs, we're, we're talking about the pure infrastructure logs. Uh, we have a bunch of different legal requirements, all that differ from each other. You have the privacy demands that says that you have the right to be forgotten. You have com commercial demands that said credit card transactions has to be logged in a specific way in a specific amount of time. And it all depends a bit on the customer requirements as well. Uh, if you have medical records, you need to have a transactional log for them for a long time. Uh, we have insurance companies who sell insurance. Uh, these logs are as long as the insurance is valid. So if, you, if it's a pension you log and you start when you're 18 to say pension, well, that's a log for 80 years then. So the tenant filtering is, is important, but that's where you get the indirect conflict with the courts because it can't be filtered. And it's not a sensible commercial idea that one insane logging requirement for 80 years can rule all the rest of them. <laughs> That's why we, I think, need more direct approaches when an intrusion happens. It's hard to go back long in time. You can't expect it. I can if I get a good report of our immediate intrusion, freeze the logs and save them, but not for a long time back. That's then there will be filtered. Mm -hmm. okay. Just add a little bit about what you said about the ransomware. <coughs> we tried to track those ransomware, uh, and what they had it was that they have information page on hacked web servers, and if we could get the information, the logs from those web servers. In this case, it was, uh, help me, it was a go-kart driver in Spain, I think. Yeah, it was like uh, someone's personal <laughs> website, which was uh, hijacked by criminals, and they put the, the uh, command and control server on personal website. Yeah, it, it, was and, it was running on, on a hosting system, but yeah. the thing was the web servers were t totally lo looking correct, the owner of it didn't know anything. He had only a couple of PHP files on his web server. But could we achieve information from that web server? Then we could know a little bit more about our trace to trace it back. Because we had some IP addresses, but most of it was hidden behind the Tor, Tor, Tor servers. Yeah, and again, we, we face legal uh, problems, like uh, we cannot uh, hack this uh, website and to sinkhole it. Uh, just to to investigate the case because this is just some some someone's personal website, and uh, by by the way, I I, I usually show to my students a movie called uh, Untraceable. It's by uh, 2008. Uh, it's about FBI agents, and they investigate uh, uh, the case with some uh, maniac who kills uh, like a cat and then then people uh, online, and uh, the people die. Uh, the, uh, the people die faster uh, depending on uh, the number of visitors. So the more visitors uh, the website has, uh, the faster the victim dies. And uh, uh, when FBI agents start investigating, so they, they find out that it, it's, uh, it uses some um, uh, uh, fast looks uh, dynamic rule of pro proxy bots to hide the, uh, to hide the um, real backend server with the web page. So when you, for example, uh, ping uh, the uh, website address, you every time, every, every time you ping the, the website, you get a new uh, IP address. And uh, then they say, okay, this is, uh, we see like the most of computers, uh, they are, the most of proxy computers, they are located in Russia. Like, uh, and they cannot do, <laughs> like, uh, they can do anything, uh, nothing, 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 nothing with the, uh, another country, uh, uh, data sets. So that's, that's, that's another problem. Uh, can you please, like in the end, uh, do some recommendation how to, how to enforce uh, uh, incident investigation process and uh, forensic process? What, what best practices you would recommend? Uh, yes, actually, you, uh, I would always recommend the same as with the ops process. You should treat the security process the same as you do an ops. So if your machine breaks down, you will get some sort of alert to the ops team that your service down. They will come, try and fix that, 
try and get it working again because you will lose a lot of services. <clears throat> you should have the same with security events. Unauthorized login has happened. Why? It should immediately go trigger an alert, uh, wake someone in the security team and the security escalation team up to go and check what has happened. So anomalies, you need to have a system that looks for anomalies. That's the really important part. We are extremely predictable in some ways. So it, when something strange happens, that's when you should trigger the security response team to investigate. And it should be 24-7 watch for this. SMS alerts waking someone up or something like that. You all have it in the ops section. So you have on-call teams there. So there's nothing strange with that. You should treat the security events the same way. I would, I would say even, even in higher, with higher priority. Yeah, I can only add that uh, you have to be prepared uh, <coughs> and think about what information do you have. Uh, maybe you think that the information you have is not good, but the bad guys out there, they are not one or two. For instance, the malware we worked on last year, uh, we think about it as it is at least developed by a 20 <coughs> crew professional developers who develop this ransomware. And they ex exchange, uh, they developed it from January, we followed it back, so it started in January with a rather, uh, it was breakable for us, but in September it was unbreakable, hidden by the Tor servers and everything, and it was extremely obfuscating code, where the code was mis mixing between executing in data area, encryption. So be prepared, think about what you or your customers has for information, and when somebody knocking on the door, it don't have to be the police, it can be, as I said, uh, someone who's suing you because they lost the information or they are uh, made, someone <coughs> made blackmailing on your customers because they reached the date, they got the date out there. We had, you know, all of those websites lost information, the dating sites and, yeah. Uh, yeah, and the f from, from my personal experience, uh, I would say that uh, like we, uh, we had like great, great presentation about uh, holistic approach to security in uh, security track. And I would say that a uh, firewall with laser beams uh, will not protect your organization even if you have like, uh, like inside uh, security system, outside security system. So in 99% persons, uh, percent of uh, cases that I investigated, uh, the, uh, the thing was uh, the, the attackers, they penetrated usual social engineering techniques. They do not need to use <coughs> zero-day vulnerabilities. They do not need to hack your uh, web server or your firewall, bypass your firewall. They just send email, uh, phishing email to your employees, to like uh, uh, accounting office or to HR office who are not like uh, security aware. And, uh, so, and they just put an attachment PDF file. And that's all, just uh, employee uh, opens the attachment PDF, a PDF has exploit, JavaScript, and uh, the infection is done. So that's, that's, uh, that happens like in 99%. So this is, uh, the weak chain is, uh, is uh, uh, stuff. So I, I would recommend to you to do some uh, trainings, like uh, some dr uh, drills, for example, to, to test uh, uh, how many, f uh, send some like fake phishing email with uh, like some attachment and to, to check how many of your uh, employees open this uh, attachment from this fake email. And uh, uh, Anders mentioned like uh, we need to, to prepare for the attack. It's not matter if, but when you will be attacked. And uh, uh, to, to be prepared, you need to develop infrastructure <coughs> like uh, tools, to have tools, to have uh, security experts, uh, to have emergency response team. And this will uh, like uh, make you stronger in case of attack. And every organization, uh, even military organizations, uh, government, White House, uh, U.S. Uh, Department, they were attacked last year, successfully attacked using uh, APTs and with, with social engineering technique. 
like uh, fishing, uh, spear fishing, and uh, watering hole attacks. So uh, there is no like 100% protection. There is no firewall with laser beams who will protect you uh, com completely. Uh, so you need to 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 train your staff, uh, and you need to uh, to to prepare for the incident uh, when when incident happens. And just mention what you said. I think 90% of you would click on an email where you got a new email about this conference. From, from OpenStack, yeah. From OpenStack <laughs> conference, everything looking exactly the same. But the thing was, the PDF, that PDF are fixed. It's included something. And all of you are going to click on it. Um, yeah, and uh, thanks. Uh, you're welcome to ask your questions, and I would happy if uh, someone uh, I don't know will uh, start the initiative to continue this forensic OpenStack project, uh, even even though it's not legal. It's, it's, it, 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 the data collected cannot be used as digital evidence, but uh, it can be used for internal investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, please, Kim. And uh, this is actually <coughs> why we should go all go to the cloud services because the thing is you need to have your systems isolated they need to be interoperable otherwise it would be useless but you still need to ha put them up in isolated environments more and more because they are going to be hacked <coughs> but that should only affect the system itself thanks your question please have set seven minutes more. Yeah, please. Uh, do you see, do you see uh, uh, no, I, no, I didn't. I didn't check what what this tool is about. Uh, yes, that's, this is the problem, of course, with the cloud systems. We can only be totally responsible for the logs of the infrastructure uh, and what the uh, virtual objects give us in logging system. We cannot do logging on the mach virtual machines themselves. That's the tricky part. So most of the evidence has to come uh, uh, from there, and that would be the sort of golden golden thicket for this. This is why we need a quick response, because I can freeze images from virtual machines through the cloud infrastructure. I can isolate them. I can put them in a separate network containing with port mirroring, but I need to know about it quickly to do that before they erase it. So <coughs> you as a customer needs to report this quickly for all anomalies. And this is a part of what I think it's not mentioned enough when you talk about cloud, public clouds especially. We have a security response team. I bet you that not most, a lot of you have a 24-7 security response team. How many of you have an in-house security response team on call 24-7? Yeah? Good. That's excellent. But that's expensive. We have one that you can utilize. This, I think, is what public clouds can contribute a lot with. You don't talk that much about it. Like security as a service. Yeah. More questions? Logs that are used to identify anomalies, not from an operational standpoint, but from a behavioral standpoint. API users. We do know how the services are supposed to talk to each other. And you can quickly see 
for instance, if the Rabbit MQ has in some way been compromised, and I want to send, use the Rabbit MQQ to send specific instructions that shouldn't come <coughs> from that, that shouldn't. So uh, we can isolate because we can determine logs that behave naturally in a predictable manner. And these uh, things we need to look for is these anomalies. And then you can have a separate alert system, logging system for storing anomalies. You could even have, with the automation possible today, a freeze function that makes snapshots of all affected uh, tenants with anomalies happening. And, and we need not to forget to calculate hashes for, uh, for snapshots when you, when you make it. So you need to keep a hash, hash value in the cloud, and uh, then you can cal calculate the hash uh, of the data received uh, on, uh, on forensic storage, for example. This will <coughs> pro provide uh, integrity of the data. More questions? Thanks. Okay. Uh, more more questions? No. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank thank you. you, experts. Thanks. Thank you.